Good morning, Willers, and welcome to the WCPF News Network. My name is Shelby. And my name is Chelsea. Today, Friday, October 1st, it is a day one, and yes, it's classic cheese pizza for lunch. Let's send our birthday wishes to Callie Karen, Alex Weisentainer, and Mr. Farrell, who turns 21 years old today. For weather, we will see mostly sunny skies and cool temperatures in the mid-60s. Ms. Sivitrice wants to remind everyone that book club will be starting on Tuesday, October 5th in room 15 right after school. Also, CPS Jewelry Club will be starting next Wednesday, October 6th right after school in room 28. Of course, Mr. Millen's game room will be meeting today right after school. In sports, yesterday, boys varsity soccer beat Sandwich 3-0 and the JV team tied Sandwich 2-2. The girls' varsity soccer team lost to Sandwich 4-0, and the girls' JV team tied Sandwich 1-1. Our CPS girls' soccer team crushed Nosset 9-0, but our girls' field hockey team lost, lost to Nosset 4-1. In cross country, our boys' CPS beat Nosset, but the girls lost. Finally, our boys' CPS soccer team lost a tough one to Nosset by a score of 6-2. Goals were scored by Veron Valchev and James Houghton. After the game, Coach Craven said he was very proud of the way the boys hung tough and never gave up. He was especially impressed with the great play from Soyan, Popov, and Nemes. Today is World Smile Day. Each year on the first Friday in October, World Smile Day devotes a day to smiling and spreading random acts of kindness. If someone smiles at you, you're bound to smile back. A smile often expresses a feeling, encouragement to someone, or serves as a greeting. If you don't smile enough, hashtag World Smile Day is the perfect day to start. Here are some of the many benefits of, benefits of smiling. It improves your mood, lowers blood pressure, relieves stress, better relationships, boosts the immune system, relieves pain, and even increases life expectancy. Who wouldn't want all those benefits? All it takes is smiling, and the more, and the more often, the better. Now it's time for another segment of our Friday special guest. Today we would like to welcome one of our new ESL teacher, teachers, Mix, Ma Mix Garland Maxson. Hello. Hello, Mix Maxson, and welcome to the show. After your first month here at CPS, how would you say it's going so far? I love it here. Uh, I think it's going really well. I feel like the staff here is a really close team. And I also feel like the students bring so much kindness and originality to the table. Great. So tell us about yourself and how you landed on Nantucket. I spent most of my life in Florida, Central Florida, actually, always within like an hour of the theme parks. And I moved to Massachusetts because I wanted to become a teacher and Massachusetts is one of the best states for this. So I'm, I'm really proud of being a teacher in Massachusetts now. And then I ended up in Nantucket looking for a change. Um, and so far, I really liked all the crazy weather stuff. I'm looking forward to more of that. As a teacher of English as a second language, what do you find most challenging and most rewarding about your job? Ooh, it is the same thing that is most challenging and most rewarding. To teach English as a second language, well, you basically have to be a cultural anthropologist, right? So you have to know so many things about different cultures, little nuances, like ways of showing respect, how people speak to elders, and also the fact that even in the same language, you cross the border from Venezuela into Colombia, for example, the same word can have two different meanings. So it's incredibly complicated, but on the other hand, I get to spend all day immersed in that cultural linguistic area and I love it. This month, as we celebrate National Hispanic American Heritage Month, is there any particular figure who, who you would like to say has inspired you the most? So honestly, it's going to be my grandmother, Mama Maria. Uh, she grew up in the deep countryside, going between the deep countryside of Venezuela to um, some rough parts of the city, back and forth. And she had very little education, but a lot of strength and a lot of discipline. So in like 
one, two generations, she took our family from being uneducated and unstable to a place where, like, she, she kept us on the straight and narrow, right? Getting our educations, being respectful all of the time. And now she has grandchildren who are doctors, lawyers, and teachers. So she's really, really inspired me. We often hear people refer to the five Fs of Hispanic culture as family, fiesta, faith, food, and football. Can you tell us a little bit about each one of these unique aspects of Latinx culture? Family is so huge. Like, we just love to spend time together. Um, and also, like, we look up to our parents a lot and take good care of them. Like, in their old age, it is my honor, right, to take care of my parents or my grandparents. Um, and then we have each other's back, right? We're like a little unit. As far as like fiesta and food, that has to go together, right? If you tell me we're gonna have a party, I expect food and I expect dancing. With, if there's no dancing, I consider it like, oh, we're eating together. But for the fiesta, you need that energy. You need the music and the life. And football, I, I have a really hard time thinking of it as soccer. I always have to catch myself and, and say soccer instead of football, but uh, I think it, what it has in common is it's a high energy sport. It takes stamina to run across such a large field like that. I'm always amazed by it. So if anything, I would say Latin culture has passion and stamina for days. In terms of promoting culture diversity here at CPS, what do you think we are doing well and what, can, what areas can we improve in? I think there's so much that is going well. There's a lot of events that highlight how much we value our diversity. Um, as far as what areas we can improve, this is something that we're already starting, but just celebrating multilingualism and not just for students who are in English as a second language, but we have a lot of multilingual students from all kinds of languages and students in our school who are currently learning another language like Spanish. And I just think that if, as long as we celebrate all of that equally, that it'll make us stronger. Finally, the question we love to ask all of our guests, where is your favorite place to get ice cream here on island and what's your go-to flavor? I have to be honest, I've only tried out two ice cream places on the island. So I don't feel like I'm a good authority on that. But as far as favorite flavors, anything with like chocolate, peanut butter and coffee. Maybe throw some toffee in there. I don't know. I like the salty with the sweet. <laughs> well, Mix Maxson, we can't thank you enough for joining us today. And we hope to, you, to have you back again soon. Thank you so much. That's all the news for today. Please remember to wear your masks while in school and follow all of our COVID-19 protocols. Have a great day and take care of yourselves and each other. And most importantly, be, be kind, kind to one, one another. another. Bye. Bye.